Guatemala, a country I've always wanted to visit, a country that's always been in the back of my mind of, I want to go there, I want to explore it. And season three, that's exactly where we start. From there, we're going to the Pacific Fins Lodge, which is home to some of the biggest pelagic sailfish I've ever seen. It is a culture, a country that almost seems to be operated on organized chaos. Join me as we explore the giant and vast region of Guatemala. We get to see volcanoes. We get to see some of the biggest pelagic fish of my life. We also explore the culture that is found in Guatemala. Feeling good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You look nervous, bro. Yeah, no, just a little bit. Yeah, uh, just a little bit nervous? Yeah, yeah. I was checking the landing gear. The lights were on more time than it used to. But now it's locked, so... Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get here, we actually need to rewind the tape a little bit. We are here, season three of Goliath Fishing. COVID is not going to stop us. That's why we're in Guatemala. We left Miami at 5 a.m. this morning, and now we are finally here in Guatemala in a private hangar, and we're taking this private plane to Pacific Fins Lodge. We already broke it, so <laughs> we're trying to fix it. You know, we left the bubble gum and toothpaste at home, so they got some legit nuts and bolts. So we're gonna fix it and then hop in it and fly it uh, again. I feel like this is how people die. Like. <laughs> After supervising these guys, like uh, like I knew what I was doing, um, which I don't. Loaded up, and we tried for attempt number two at the runway. Only to find out we were still having issues, but this time we were 3,000 feet in the air. I could tell. Captain was feeling a little bit nervous. You could just, you could sense it on him. I don't know if it was the cameras, but it wasn't. Come to find out it wasn't the cameras. We were having plane problems, 3,000 feet in the air. Feeling good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You look nervous, bro. Yeah, no, just a little bit. Yeah, uh, just a little bit nervous? Yeah, yeah. Why are you nervous? The cold wind. Yeah. Just a little bit, yeah, but it's normal, don't worry. And the other thing that got me a little bit nervous was the landing gear was on safe, so it was for that reason. I was checking the landing gear. The lights were on more time than it used to, but now it's locked, so this light was on. When it's unlocked, the right light turns on, so that got me a little bit nervous, but don't worry. Right now it's normal. Yeah. After we landed safely, thank the Lord, we were finally here. And let me tell you, culture shock right away. Guatemala is a uh, it's not a rich country. You're not seeing Bentleys and Maseratis driving around. You're seeing small mopeds. You're seeing streets with no traffic signs. You're seeing police on the side of the road with shotguns and full auto machine guns. But at the same time, you start exploring the culture and you find out how rich they really are within themselves.
finally here, Guatemala, Pacific Fins Lodge. Everything that we have planned for this trip has finally paid off. I couldn't wait for day two. You know, I've heard so many great things about the Pacific Fins Lodge, and I've heard about the different boat operations they have. But the one boat you constantly hear about out of there is the Chichos. Over five generations of Guatemalan fishermen. The amount of knowledge that they have about fish, you and I couldn't even ever remember anything like that. Things that we're still learning, they've already forgotten. That's how much knowledge they have about this area. This trip also had a little bit more meaning to me because I got to bring my father. You know, he's never done anything like this and I got to actually bring him on this trip. And then Vance Wright, who's one of my mentors, but he's become an older brother over the years. So it was really rewarding and satisfying to have these two gentlemen here that mean so much in my life to explore this fishery in this beautiful country. You had that sense as you were heading out, seeing how the crew was operating, testing each reel to see if the pound pressure was correct. If these fish were not chewing today, we were still gonna catch them. I don't know how, but we were still gonna catch them. As we got about 30 miles, we ran across a giant giant field of spinning porpoises. It was something out of National Geographic. I mean, our first stop and we have this much action going around us. Porpoises launching, spinning out of the surface. So we got our spread quickly in the water and in a matter of minutes we hooked up. And it seems like you're gonna hear that a lot this whole trip about how quick the hookups were. Now you'll see when I'm fighting these fish, I'll actually put the rod butt right in that little knuckle. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it just gives you that perfect balance. This is a big fish. I, I have, I'm just trying to camera right now to, to take the nerves away. This is probably my biggest mahi I've ever been able to hook. It was awesome, man. The captain was yelling, you know, left teaser, left teaser. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to focus on fighting this. Dig in, dig in. So it was awesome. This fish came into the spread and it was sitting by the spread and we had a bait. We trailed the bait off and we kept letting line out and he kept going it. Well, at one point my bait actually got behind the fish. Captain said speed roll it up. When we speed rolled it up, instant hookup. And I mean, this thing is a stud.